does require a little bit of energy because of course with today, with the next hour, and with this year, you'll get out of it what you're going to put into it. So for the next hour, I'd like you to put a little bit more into it than you have over the last lunch, low, quiet period of time. All right, introductions. Now, um, I don't want to know your names because I won't remember them. What I would like to know is, I would like all of you to close your eyes right now because you've already sat down. Stand up. I'm bad. Fine. Stand up. Tell me your positive word. Um, the environment. Environment. All right. Um, I thought of pavlovas and um, narrow mindedness. The kiwi and rubbish. Sweet as and race issues. Freedom, and I don't get that one. The best one was freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Um, scenery and racial problems. Um, beautiful and far. Ice cream and rugby heads. Lifestyle and Scenery and the source of rap. I got scenery but I didn't get that one. <laughs> Summer and I didn't get a better one. students that I was at school wanted to know um, what did my parents do, how much did they earn, um, where was I at, um, you know, where did, what kind of clothes did I buy here in New Zealand, what kind of food did we eat. But when it comes to um, what sport did we play, and then the other things I'd asked about, sheep, rugby, that was just those smattering of things that you hear about other countries. You know, you talk to someone from Switzerland, you're going to ask them about fox and chocolate. <laughs> okay, um, so one thing that I regretted um, not knowing, brushing up on, was the everyday things. Um, for example, I had some students who, from a different year, come, they'd been doing a project about sports and they'd heard about cricket and they came to me because they knew they played cricket in New Zealand and they wanted to know more. I know zip about <laughs> cricket and I felt really bad. Um, because here was a resource for them to, you know, you're from New Zealand, um, tell us about cricket. They play cricket there. Oh. <laughs> um, I felt pretty bad about that, and um, it's, a, it's, an, it's a small thing, but um, that's part of being an ambassador. Uh, 
um, to New Zealand. And you're going to get some information on statistics about New Zealand population, some of the things like that. But what I would like you to be thinking about is who are you as a Kiwi in your culture um, so that when you go away, um, when people do ask you about New Zealand, there's a slightly bigger picture that you can give them. Does that all make sense? Yeah, okay. Um, now, one, two, three, four, five. 25 people. So, one, two, three, four, five. This piece of paper here, I would like you to very quickly crutch around the paper and scribble down some of the ideas that you can think of on that topic. One, two, three. Everyone's rotating around to the next piece of paper. They're up to their third lot of paper. So what do you have to do? Write down Spanish. That's all, just write. Okay. Tina Polo. Woohoo! Sports, uh, fabulous sportsmanship but it also exported Kiwi technology and ingenuity. And um, there's one thing that Kiwis are good at. We're a very small country, but we're really good at doing the hard things or the technical things that require a wee bit of ex extra ingenuity. Um, yeah. Okay, next one. Sports. Yes, all of them. Um, Heavenly creatures, yeah. <laughs> That's history. It well, is history. Yeah. This is history. America's Cup. Mm -hmm. First woman to vote. Bet. Moriori. <coughs> Maori Legends. Yeah. Who doesn't know Maori Legends, by the way? Stand up. He, he wanted to make a female form, so he was on the beach up, on, up in Northland, I think it's Cape Ranga. He made the, the female form on the sand and then blew like, breathed light. The fish. Yeah. Yeah. Is this what he meant? The fish, yeah. Yeah. The the fish yeah. must yeah. have been a fish. They feel the the way, sort of bones. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I not only about the princess, but to marry her to do his task, my mum said him, was to eat his way through the mountains, freeing somewhere in Hawke's Bay, and he choked on a stone and died. <laughs> <laughs> he fell out and he's to Mount of Hagnia, and then she went to so sad she threw herself off, and now she's the blanket covering him, the mist. Oh, nice. Racism. Bogans. Government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Dennis. Marketing. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Mockingbirds, they made it in the state. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, we know we've got great, lots of great New Zealand music, but it's not actually a lot of it that's away overseas, so take some of it with you. Take some of it with you. Away with you. <coughs> music is a goodie. Um, there, you know, I'm sure you, um, there's a book about New, New Zealand towns floating around. You might want to take, um, have a look around and um, look at books. One, one small book to take away, lots of pictures to show people what New Zealand actually looks like. Um, there, there are lots of things that you can take away. <coughs> and uh, one of them is this. Um, even though, even though you, know, you might not have a lot to do with uh, Māori culture here now, today, in your own school, or at home in your family, 
when you go away, suddenly um, it's going to be your thing because you're a New, Ze New Zealander. Whether you've had anything to do with it while you're here or not, it's like um, an Australian who's asked to sing a waltz in Matilda, even though they probably don't know the words to the song. Um, who knows the, knows the words to our national anthem? That's a good thing. And you might want to take that away with you. But um, something else that you're able to take away is um, a little bit of language. A little bit of language. Mm -hmm. Who is probably going to say kia ora while they're away overseas? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who is probably going to be asked, oh, so what language do you speak there? Oh, English, oh yeah. And the others? And yeah. you'll say, oh yeah, yeah, I would speak Maori as well. You're only, you're only here in New Zealand. Oh really? What does it sound like? <laughs> kia ora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you a tori fa. Just reel off some place yeah, names yeah, yeah. and they'll be impressed. Oh, yeah. Whakatane. <laughs> Whakatane para para umu. Yeah, yeah. Para para umu. Uh, Tahirua kia ora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think well, all, everyone that I know has been away, away overseas, even people on the OE, OE to the UK, they've all done it. So something that I would like to give you is something with a bit of structure to take away so that you're not sort of humming and hawing there, rattling off your ones, twos and threes and place names. And uh, it would be nice if, if you're able to stand up at your class or your school assembly or your Rotary Club, host parents' Rotary Club dinner as the guest um, that you might be taking to. Um, you might be asked to um, speak in front of your the senior year's history class. Um, teachers in your school are going to make use of you as a resource. Um, your local clubs, like you know, the equivalent to Kiwanis or Rotary um, or Lions, that sort of thing, you, you are going to be made use of as a resource, if only once in your year. So, how would you like it if you could stand up with a wee bit of paper in front of your class and say, Kia ora koutou katoa. Ko tainui taku waka. Ko ngati mani poko taku iwi. Ko ngati kino haku taku Ko Rodney, Rowa, Ko Barbara, Taku Matua, Ko Barbara Aho, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Kato. Be kind of nice to be able to smooth that off. And you can, with this, the do it yourself, fill it in me! <laughs> Kiwis come from? Does anyone know? The natives. Yeah, well, you got it. You got it. If the English the start of it, the English called you Kiwis. Well, actually, there was an Australian. There was an Australian man who had shoe nugget or shoe polish. Oh, yeah, <laughs> shoe polish. And he had a New Zealand wife. And this is back way before World War One. And at that time in New Zealand, there was no one icon or thing that uh, ident we identified with. The Kiwi, the Moa, the Silver Fern and the Southern Cross were all being used by companies who wanted a New Zealand logo. And this Australian man, he named his shoe polish Kiwi. Shoe polish, and he put a little picture of a Kiwi bird on it in honour of his wife from New Zealand. This is really good polish, and it was used by the Australian Army and the New Zealand Army. It became quite well known for its long-lasting shine in the trenches, because it's important that your boots look good when you're fighting. <laughs> and and uh, it, was, it, became, it was adopted by uh, other armies during World War I. They noticed, oh my God, look at the shine on these boots. They need some of that polish. So all the other armies started using it. And then in between the World Wars, so, you know, it was out there exported by this Australian, and then by World War II, everyone was using it. And that's when um, World War II, World War I, World War II, that's when we started doing our OEs. Okay, people, New Zealand men started going away overseas to Africa, of all places, to um, all sorts of weird little out of the way spots around the world, Philippines. Um, and that's how we we were started being called Kiwis and the, our soldiers brought it back. We started calling ourselves Kiwis. So it came from an Australian shoe polish. 
quite you, don't, you can make something up if it sounds lovely. Very small. Gentle's good idea. Yeah. Togs. Togs. Um, what is that? Batch. Hmm? No, Duvet. Duvet. Yeah. They call it the Doing it with a comforter, Australia. Yeah, a comforter. Yeah, quality. Any other New Zealanders? Rubber. Hmm? Rubber. Razor. Yeah. Rubber. You don't want to say a rubber in the States. English class in the States, leaned across the most gorgeous guy in the whole school. Do you have a rubber I could borrow? <laughs> <laughs> eraser! 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 <laughs> and, uh, yeah, bagpipes. Yeah, bagpipes. Yeah, bagpipes. Yeah, bagpipes. Batch. Batch. We got that, didn't we? Aussie. Aussie? Uni. Anzac. We've got Anzac biscuits. What are they made of? <laughs> and <Anzac> biscuits. <laughs> crib. Who lives in the North Island? Do you know what a crib is? Deck. Who has a deck at, 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 on their house? Who's got a deck? Yeah, yeah veranda. Patio. Yeah, we don't get decks. Juicy. Juicy. So there's a couple of um, examples that you'll be able to give to people just to put it in the picture. 
that um, because not every country has a group of people that were there first and um, and have a very different culture. Okay, part of our colonial heritage is um, that that we've now got two cultures in one country, the same as Australia, the same as Greenland, the same as Canada, and lots of other countries. So, uh, what are you going to tell people about about uh, the culture? What do you want people to know? Do you want it as a little positive thing? We can yes. say it's like um, sort of Europeans and Maoris because there's a lot more than that now. Yeah, that's another good question. We'll get to that in a minute. Because, um, yeah, we could go on and on. Um, what do you want people to know about our culture? It's a positive thing. What else is so special about it? What's different about it to the European culture? Traditions, Traditions values, food. Extended family concepts, yep. Clothes, clothes features. Mm. Traditionally or now? Traditionally yeah. now. Yeah. Mm. Like, are you thinking the once were warriors sort of thing? No. 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 Just the change. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 The differences between the cheesy traditional cultural picture and the plastic tickets. You know, you know that sort of like the dolls, you know, the hair and yeah, the yeah, skin. Yeah, yeah. 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 separate, you know, so we've got a high enough percentage of people. 
Um, what's the latest group of uh, immigrants that we've had to New Zealand? What's the latest bunch, just in the last Somali. couple of years? Somali. 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 Vietnam. Cambodia. Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame, really. Um, they, they feel that way. But, you know, they're, they're kids that are loose enough to get. Um, other cultures that we've got here. Um, oh, one thing that's special about New Zealand is that um, how many, uh, when you go out to eat, how many different kinds of food can you get? that when you go out um, to a cafe or, or something overseas, um, there isn't going to be that variety. Now, why do you think that is? So Um, 
it was a respectful thing. We weren't abusing it. We did, they, they put their all into it, and um, and they were eager to learn what it was about because they had seen it on ESPN that her room is about this thing that New Zealand rugby players do. Um, so it was a positive, uh, respectful experience. Now that was my choice, and um, I mean, there was no, no one else in New Zealand who was around me. Um, so I would um, recommend that uh, make your own decision about what you share. And as I personally, if you do it with a sincere and respectful heart, then why not? Why not share that part of New Zealand? Here, no, it wouldn't be appropriate, but over there, you're alone. You are the only Kiwi. But it's your choice. Do you want to explain the, the proper history behind it? Please. Oh, I just want to hear your version, actually, because I think the one I've got is a bit wrong. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Go for it. I'm all weak and more confident. Um, and you do, do put me off the way you've got it slightly wrong. The, um, which is why Nai Tuhit Nai Tahi feel a bit sensitive about it, because it's actually not one of the better hackers, but also because um, if you translate it correctly, it actually talks about the chief who jumps into the honey pit when he hears the other tribe coming, and his wife sits on top of him. To hide him. To hide him. <coughs> um, and that's why it's not actually one of the better hackers, but it's just the one that everybody knows. Yeah. Is that the... I think they should read that one. No, okay. Yeah, anyone else? I could have the well, I mean, Yeah. I guess, um, um, like the ones who are already um, the, the, the history behind it, there's a lot of history, as New Zealanders, you know that history. It's about the urban, um, urban Māori issue that we've got in our country. But overseas, that movie becomes a different thing. Do you know what I mean? So, Parts of our, our culture, take it out of context, and put it overseas. For example, um, a bone carving. A bone carving in France. What does it mean? Does it carry the same meaning? Does it carry? It does it to the wearer, but to someone who's French, it's a beautiful and exotic piece of jewellery. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So a lot of things that are special to us, when you take them out of context, um, it's going to become a different thing away overseas like the green stone you're wearing around your neck. Now, if you were wearing that in Asia, they're going to see something quite different. Okay. So, um, that's something for you to bear in mind. Poise, poise are funny when you take them away out of New Zealand because there's nothing else like them around the world and they're such a hot shape. Things with them. So, um, yeah, lots of things like that. Okay. Now, as we wind down, does anyone have any questions or any other queries? It was a good question. Thank you. All right. Do you have a better idea of some of the things that you need to think about before you go overseas as to who you are as a Kiwi? Have you had some more thoughts today? Have you, has someone, has everyone had one thought that hadn't entered their head before that they thought, oh, yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I might have yeah. to come back to that one before I go away overseas. Yeah. So, out of the session, um, as I say, to take, when you take a candle, see a candle's light, you've got to take it into a dark place. We just had a peek at the dark room that you guys are going to be going into as candles. Um, and I would like you to think about it a lot more. With this um, we hand out, I managed to destroy both photocopies, photocopiers in my entire building uh, this morning, so I left very quickly at work, so I've only made five copies. Really, you should, one was, the paper's coming out so hot, the whole thing was about to explode. So, if you, if you would like um, one of these to take away with you, I would like you to write your name in. We hope you enjoyed tonight's mini-series. Why not try a delicious gourmet pizza tomorrow? Call Pizza Hut and just say gourmet. Gimme, 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 says Tom when he has a taste of television stardom. Kiwi Fruit dishes up gay news, then with the L word and the insider, TV2.